Is it possible to be a successful photographer with just your phone? Do people actually make money by selling cell phone photos? And what are some things that you need to keep in mind to create a profitable stock photography side hustle with just your phone? In this video, I'm going to talk to a special guest all the way from Korea, which is really far away, to gain some insights that will make you look at cell phone photography in a whole new light. But where is he? I'm definitely not in Korea, or am I? Look who it is. Hello. Oh, hey. Nico. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you. Hold on. Okay, so we're going to do this virtually. Noe, thanks so much for virtually traveling 7,000 miles. Isn't technology amazing? Anyway, could you start by just telling us who you are and what you do? My name is Noe. I'm an educator, so I'm a teacher, and I'm also a photographer. So during the daytime, I teach English, and in the evening, I work as a photographer. When I found your Instagram, I was mesmerized. And then when I found out that you take a lot of your photos with just a phone, I was even more blown away. Taking photos with your phone in the daytime is one thing, but it's, in my opinion, a lot more challenging at night. Can you tell me a little bit about shooting with your phone, how long you've been doing it, why you've been doing it, and what you've learned by doing it? I started shooting with my phone mainly as a way to inspire others to go out and teach photography. Like I often log into YouTube and the first thing I see is people telling you what are the best lenses and lenses that you have to have in order to be like a good photographer. And I just thought that was uh, really wrong and misleading. So I wanted to show others that you don't need the latest and greatest gear to get started with photography. And you actually don't even need it if you want to get into things such as stock photography or selling prints, because the majority of people are not trying to make billboards. So you don't need that many megapixels. So I started shooting with my phone as a way to inspire others to go out there and shoot and uh, as a way to get others interested in shooting photography even if they only have a phone. I've actually been a photographer since 2011, mainly self-taught. I do sell my photos and uh, not just photos, but I also sell video. Uh, I use stock photography websites. Mainly I work with Getty Images because they have a Korean branch and I can visit them often physically. I also sell prints through websites such as Society6. The majority of my photography income comes from uh, freelance photography work, whether it be shooting with my phone or shooting with a DSLR. I do have some notoriety as a phone photographer, so sometimes big companies come to me and they want me to use their phone for like, uh, kind of for their products. So a lot of it does come from freelance and I also do time-lapse photography. So many companies like to buy time-lapse footage and that's a pretty much big chunk of my income. I've seen some of your time-lapses and they are quite beautiful. I also find it really interesting that companies, you know, cell phone companies will hire you to test out phones and do cell phone photography with their phones. That's something I never thought of, but you know what? It makes sense. One thing I'm also curious about is how much do you edit your cell phone photos, especially the photos that I see on your Instagram? You know, you make Korea look so colorful and so beautiful, and I'm very curious how much editing goes into that. And I would also love to see a before and after photo. It really depends. Um, sometimes I don't edit the phone pictures at all. It really depends on what the company wants. Some companies ask me to shoot raw footage and they'll handle the rest, but the majority of them do want me to edit them because it saves them a lot of time, kind of plug and play. So I am best known for my like landscapes and cityscapes when it comes with working with professional companies, especially when they want to make some promotional materials for the city. So I usually edit them in a more natural way, kind of a landscape, but it really comes down to the time of the day that I shoot. And secondly, I do kind of have that Serapunk aesthetic style photography, and that one is heavily edited and it's more niche. So mainly magazines uh, are the ones who buy the more heavily edited materials. And when it comes to TV stations, they usually buy the more natural subdued photography. Fascinating, yeah, I do think, you know, there's a market for super edited photos and a market for, you know, photos that look more natural and not so edited. You know, I often say for stock photography, for example, a lot of times customers are looking for 
you know, the more natural photos, maybe they want to do some edits themselves, but it does seem like there is definitely a market for both styles. So when it comes to stock photography, I'm guessing that you sell a combination of photos that you take with your phone, as well as photos that you take with your DSLR camera, right? How successful would you say that your cell phone photos are compared to your DSLR photos on the stock photography platforms that you are signed up for? I think for the most part, most people can't really tell the difference, uh, even when they're printed. Um, when it comes to working with companies though, there is a wall you hit, like uh, they are willing to pay a certain amount up to a point. They usually tend to pay more when you hit, get a higher resolution, cause like they want a really, really big resolution for like H 4K TV or something like that. But if they want to buy lesser resolution uh, phone photos, they tend to pay less. But in all honesty, those that cost much less and uh, low resolution actually sell a lot more than like the more expensive DSLR shots. So in a way it does kind of even out like uh, I'll sell a lot of phone photos and I'll make a decent amount of money and then when it comes to professional time lapses they will sell less often but they actually go for a higher price so the prices do kind of even out. Is there a certain type of image that does better than a different type of image? Like for me, for example, editorial image, especially newsworthy photos tend to do really well. I have noticed for me personally that photos that have you know people in them often do better than photos that don't have people in them, but it really varies. So I'm curious what your observations are. Actually, the majority of images that do well are very simple things such as pictures of babies, pictures of uh, landmarks around the city. They do tend to give you a guide, like uh, Getty Images sends me like a kind of a monthly guide and they tell these kind of, these are the kind of images people are looking to buy the most. And usually it revolves around holidays, like there's like a 4th July thing going on or like there's like a new year or Christmas they tend to tell you to shoot more of those kinds of images because they anticipate that they will be selling a lot more. So usually I say holiday things and festivals are uh, what sell the most and just everyday items that can be interpreted in many ways. Those are the kind of images you're looking to buy. It doesn't have to be some really crazy uh, out of your grasp images. There's a difference when it comes to pictures of people and pictures without people. It's tricky because I usually tend to stay away with uh, pictures that have people specifically in them because you have to get like a model release for some of these companies. So when I do shoot people I tend to do it from very far away where it's like a large crowd and you can't distinguish any one person. But occasionally I do shoot uh, models or people and you do have to get a model release for them. But uh, it's not really so difficult if you know this in mind. If you, if you keep this in mind, then uh, you just ask the person and you get some kind of written consent from your model. And you can take as many stock photo images as you like. And if you're shooting some events, I will do it kind of a little further away and make sure not one person stands out and it's more of a crowd and more of a public face than um, just a single person. But yes, uh, usually, the images where there's not one person standing out tend to sell more, but I think that's because that's kind of my strong point and people know me for that style already. Yeah, that's actually a good point and something that I should probably, you know, mention again. If you're taking photos of like a single person, like a model and, you know, someone who's posing for you, uh, and you're uploading those photos to stock photography platforms or you want to sell those photos commercially, then yeah, you need to get model releases for that. However, if you are taking, you know, uh, cityscape photos and there's people walking around, um, those can be uploaded to some stock photography platforms as editorial photos. I actually have a video about that. But there are some stock photography platforms that don't allow editorial photos, so you just have to do your research before submitting, you know, your photos. Another thing I'm curious about, you know, I talk so much about stock photography. Um, I don't talk so much about selling your photos as prints, but I know that you focus a lot on that, or at least I assume that you do. So can you tell me, do you actually sell more of your photos as prints or through stock? What is more successful for you? I certainly do sell m much more prints than uh, stock images. I mean, uh, photography is kind of fickle. And that's one thing people need to know is that some months you just make more money than others. Occasionally you get kind of lucky and one picture will go for like 4,000 or 2,000 or something like that. But you know, that's really rare. The majority of times 
Uh, most images only go for cents or for dollars. It's not really that much money. So don't expect to shoot like 10 pictures and make a living off that. You have to take lots of pictures constantly, all the time uploading them. And then over time, you, you end up making more money. So back to the question, do I sell more money from prints or from stock photography? I sell many more prints, but I make much more money from like stock images, but it really does vary per month. Maybe one month I'll sell, I'll sell more prints and then one month I'll sell more stock images or maybe I don't sell any stock images for a while and then suddenly bam, someone buys one for 2000. So you have to vary your income and you can't put all your eggs in one basket. And where do you see greater potential for aspiring photographers? I think the greatest potential is actually just uh, dipping your feet in various uh, mediums. You should sell prints, but you should also sell stock photography, and not just one website. You should go to various websites. Same thing with the prints. There's different uh, websites that people go to and that get advertised. So don't limit yourself to only one thing. As a photographer, it's important to have big income coming from different places. Uh, including freelance and professional work. Great point. Don't put all of your eggs in one basket. And for people who watch my channel, they might think all of my eggs are in the Shutterstock basket. That is not true. I just talk about Shutterstock because I have the largest basket there and the most successful basket, but I'm actually on a variety of different platforms myself. So question for you, and I know this one is one that you definitely have an answer for. What advice would you give to somebody who really wants to become a successful photographer, but they just can't afford a lot of gear? Like maybe they just don't have a lot of money to start. What does someone need to succeed? Can they succeed with just a phone? What do you recommend? You know, photography doesn't have to be very expensive. And I know you get that impression from watching a lot of uh, influencers and YouTubers, but actually you don't need the latest and greatest gear to take pictures. If you're on a budget, you can get a nice uh, mirrorless camera or DSLR, it's up to you, whatever you can afford. And as long as there is good light, you can take good images. I mean, I'm a night photographer and I shoot most of my, most of my photos in like the dark and I don't even use the latest and greatest gear and yet I make the majority of my money from time lapse and uh, night photography. But I suggest to you uh, not worrying so much about the camera body. When it comes to lenses, you do want a variety of lenses and you don't have to buy the most expensive lenses either. What you can do is go to eBay or go to a vintage store or some kind of pawn shop and buy a whole array of old vintage glass. You can buy different, you can build a collection of lenses that can cost 20 or $30 each. I suggest a wide angle, a medium, a 50, maybe an 85 and a 135. So that's just an example, but you can buy a whole little collection of glasses and have one for all the occasion and spend much, much less than if you were to buy one big expensive lens that you can usually only use for one thing. Just take your time and learn to manually focus. Buy an adapter, they're like $8 for these lenses. And you can have a really quick setup as a photographer on a budget. Wow, that's really cool. I didn't know you could get you know lenses for that cheap. I will definitely have to look into that. I mean, I have a ton of lenses already. I honestly don't need any more. But it's really cool to know that there are so many affordable options out there. Do you have any other words of wisdom? Absolutely. As I stated earlier, you should not put all your eggs in one basket. You need to diversify your income, whether it be through stock photography or selling prints, doing small jobs. It, it really helps to have income coming from various places. Like, uh, for example, right now I'm looking to sell iPhone cases. I mean, you don't think about that kind of thing, money from iPhone cases or phone cases, but even a little bit of income helps. You know, if you were to, for example, sell some merchandise like a shirt, then you have prints coming in. I have YouTube income coming in. I have freelance. I have stock photography. All these little sources of income slowly add up over time. So there's no reason why you can't dip your toes a little bit in each and see how it goes. And if it's worth it, keep at it. And if it doesn't work out for you, then try something else. Don't worry about the, the cost of equipment. Try vintage lenses, it'll save you a lot of money. And then once you have a good business, then maybe you can look into updating your equipment and buying a fancy camera and fancy lenses. And uh, that's what I recommend for you. So yeah, hope you enjoyed my words of wisdom and uh, 
back to Nicole. That was definitely really valuable advice. By the way, do you like this like neon I've got going behind me? I decorated just for this occasion. Found all the neon I had in my apartment. Anyways, guys, if you want to learn more about taking magical photos at night, especially on a rainy day, head over to Noe's channel, which I've got linked in the description below and also in the end screen. Plus, it's also pretty cool to see a photographer at work in Korea. It definitely makes me want to go there and maybe I will. I've definitely been inspired by Noe to take more night photos. We actually collaborated to make a video in which I go out and I take night photos of, you know, the area that I live in, which is Washington DC with, you guessed it, a cell phone. This was definitely challenging for me because I don't usually do night photography with a cell phone, but it was a new experience for me and it was definitely a fun challenge. Did I epically fail or were my night photos passable? Head over to Noe's channel to find out. Anyways, do you use your cell phone for photography? And if so, tell me a little bit about it. Let me know in the comments. Do you succeed in selling your cell phone photos or do you just do it for fun? I'm curious. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video. Take care.